It was a warm summer morning, June 28, 1940. Amidst the chaos of the Second World War, with the German army prevailing in France, the Mediterranean Sea saw the Allied fleet orchestrating evacuations from Malta. Among the squadrons safeguarding the convoys was the 7th Cruiser Squadron, commanded by Vice Admiral John Tovey. Then, a Sunderland flying boat relayed critical intel. Several Italian destroyers were positioned near Zakynthos. Tovey, assuming command, directed his cruisers north, tactically organizing for interception. To the southwest of the Greek island Crete, one of the first naval battles of the Second World War was about to break out. Immerse yourself in the epic world of Warpath, the military-themed, massively multiplayer, online, real-time strategy game available on both PC and mobile. With captivating graphics, thrilling commander action, and the excitement of multiplayer real-time strategy, Warpath has achieved an impressive 35 million downloads globally in three years. Take command, devise intricate tactics, and experience the realism of sniper warfare. Traverse a vast 3D battlefield, engage in combined arms tactics, and partake in grand battles set in historic cities. Construct and personalize your base on realistic terrain while leading your troops to victory. Explore a vast array of real-life military equipment with over 200 armaments divided into 13 unit types and 1,000 unique modifications. Upgrade your arsenal with real-life weapon parts. Thorough historical research is reflected in detailed unit artwork and 3D models. Visit Warpath's event page, offering players the chance to win valuable in-game resources uh, and up to $300 in physical rewards. Visit the link in the description, use the code SNIPER24, or scan the QR code on screen to join Warpath. See you on the battlefield. Summer, 1940. Italy, in alliance with Germany, harbored grand visions of asserting dominance in the Mediterranean and the Middle East. The throbbing lifeline to these aspirations lay in Italian supply shipments, making landfall at strategic hubs like Tripoli, Benghazi, Tobruk, Derna, and Bardia. Marshal Pietro Badoglio, a perceptive military mind, had foreseen the specter of Anglo-French naval might and in late 1939 adopted a defensive stance. His strategy oriented toward internal security and sustaining supplies year-round. In the summer of 1940, Italy unveiled its war aims, envisaging a parallel front with Germany, Balkan dominance and African corridor, and secure access to Spain and the Black Sea. The strategic chessboard involved seizing the Suez Canal, extending influence into the Balkans and the Middle East, and establishing direct links with Italian East Africa, the Black Sea, and Spain. The linchpin of success, however, rested on the pillars of intelligence and logistics. Complicating matters, Italy's air force resisted collaboration with the Navy. Rooted in a historical preference for autonomous air operations dating back to the inception of the Regia Aeronautica in 1923. The clash between land-based air power proponents and naval advocates for carriers and specialist aircraft hindered the Regia Marina's bid for a naval torpedo bomber force. At the war's outset, the Italian Navy had around a hundred reconnaissance planes, mostly outdated single-motored hydroplanes. Their limited capabilities fell short of wartime demands. Recognizing the need for better planes, the Navy faced challenges due to shortages and operational differences with the Air Force. Eventually, a compromise allowed Air Force planes, unsuitable for naval missions, to conduct reconnaissance. This arrangement often yielded inaccurate information, contrasting with the effective night reconnaissance by the British. Italian night air-sea reconnaissance was non-existent, highlighting the Navy's compromised vision. The supply chain crucial for Italy's North African and Middle Eastern campaign faced hurdles, with limited port capacities and pre-war infrastructure. Mussolini's belated directive in May 1940 to build an offensive force in Libya underscored Italy's unpreparedness. June 10, 1940, marked Italy's declaration of war on Britain and France. Badoglio anticipated a British advance into Tirrenaica, eastern Libya. This propelled the Regia Marina 
and Regia Aeronautica into offensive operations. Reinforcements had to be sent to strengthen the port city of Tobruk. It was imperative that Italian convoys supplied their troops overseas. Italy, quick off the mark, initiated regular convoys. On the 19th of June, the submarine Zoea set sail for Tobruk, bearing a critical cargo of ammunition. The very next day, a destroyer squadron spearheaded by the Artillier departed Augusta bound for Benghazi, its precious cargo consisting of troops and anti-tank guns. A week later, another convoy, flanked by vigilant escorts, departed Naples destined for Tripoli. The convoy carried over 1,700 troops and essential supplies. In a carefully orchestrated plan, the Italian turbine-class destroyers of the 2nd Destroyer Squadron, consisting of the Espero, commanded by the esteemed Capitano di Vascello, Enrico Baroni, Zefiro, and Ostro, emerged as the chosen vessels for transporting anti-tank units. The turbine-class destroyers were constructed for the Rigia Marina in the 1920s. Enlarged and improved from the Sauro class, they prioritized speed boasting Parsons geared steam turbines and powerful propulsion. With an overall length of 93.2 meters, they displaced 1,700 metric tons at deep load and reached speeds exceeding an impressive 36 knots during sea trials. Armed with four 120 millimeter guns, 40 millimeter AA guns, and torpedo tubes, they showcased enhanced capabilities compared to their predecessors during their service. Their selection hinged on a combination of high speed and substantial loading capacity. Meanwhile, Vice Admiral Sir Andrew Cunningham had mobilized the entire Mediterranean fleet to protect civilians evacuating from Malta, the only allied base between Gibraltar and Alexandria. On June 27th, the fleet began patrolling for the first time since the outbreak of war. Three Allied convoys were being escorted by seven cruisers. Convoy as one, originating from the Dardanelles and escorted by light cruisers HMS Cape Town and Caledon, commanded by Captain Larkham and Captain Fallowfield, included destroyers HMS Garland, Nubian, Mohawk and Vampire. At the same time, the 7th Cruiser Squadron, commanded by Vice Admiral John Tovey and the 1st Cruiser Division and 2nd Cruiser Division, led by various captains, were strategically positioned west of Crete, south of Cape Matapan. Tovey's squadron comprised the Leander-class cruisers HMS Orion, Neptune, Sydney, and the town-class cruisers Liverpool and Gloucester, while reconnaissance aircraft from Alexandria and Malta supported the squadron. Influenced by the York-class heavy cruiser, the Leanders featured 6-inch and 4-inch naval guns, 0.5-inch Vickers machine guns and torpedo tubes. With a speed of 32 knots, wartime modifications included additional anti-aircraft armament and changes to aircraft launching capability, enhancing their adaptability during the conflict. On the morning of June 28th, a Sunderland flying boat from Malta relayed crucial information to Tovey's squadron. An Italian destroyer fleet was positioned 50 miles west of Zakynthos, the southernmost Ionian island. While the 1st and 2nd cruiser divisions held their ground, Vice Admiral Tovey took charge, leading the 7th cruiser squadron north to intercept. A subsequent signal at 1640 pinpointed Italian warships 35 miles west of Tovey's position. Organizing his forces into two divisions on an extended line of bearing, Tovey steered southwest. Well informed by their aerial reconnaissance, the English cruisers maneuvered to ensnare the Italian formation between two lethal fires. The first section comprising Orion, Neptune and Sydney to the north and the second section comprising Gloucester and Liverpool to the south. By 1833, 75 miles southwest of Cape Matapan, Liverpool spotted Baroni's unsuspecting ships against the afternoon sun. A salvo from Liverpool at 22,000 yards prompted Espero to turn southwest, hindered by a machinery defect. Espero could only manage 25 knots. Orion's division, receiving Liverpool's report, opened fire at 18,000 yards by 1859. Recognizing the imminent threat and the limitations of his ship, Baroni ordered Ostro and Zafiro to escape while he engaged the enemy and deployed smoke. Espero, hampered by a malfunctioning boiler, 
launched torpedoes towards Orion. Hindered by the zigzag movements necessary to deploy the smoke screen, the Aspero lagged behind as the English cruisers closed the gap. At 1905, Neptune detected wakes, prompting Tovey to alter course to avoid the torpedoes. Liverpool focused on Aspero, describing her return fire as good for range but bad for line. Despite closing in by 1920, Liverpool found Espero elusive. In a surprising turn, Espero struck first, hitting Liverpool with a 4.7-inch shell that failed to detonate torpedoes. Liverpool and Gloucester turned away. It wasn't until 1930 that the first English barrage found its mark, with the distance reduced to 12,800 metres. Observing the situation, Tovey directed Orion, Neptune and Sydney to attack bombarding Espero with six-inch salvos. By eight o'clock, Espero was crippled in her engine spaces. Undeterred, the crew aboard the Italian destroyer persisted in their courageous firing, maintaining their posts as long as the guns could be manned. Tovey, mindful of dwindling ammunition and the approaching darkness, abandoned the pursuit of Ostro and Zafiro, setting a course for Malta and leaving Sydney to deal with the damaged destroyer Approaching the drifting Espero, Sydney faced rounds from the crippled vessel but retaliated with devastating broadsides. Espero capsized after approximately two hours of battle. In a poignant display of leadership and valor, Captain Baroni saluted his men as the ship sank, choosing to go down with it voluntarily. Sydney spent the next two hours rescuing 47 of the 225 men aboard. The precision of British marksmanship proved to be less than stellar, with the Aspero only succumbing to hits on the 15th salvo. Baroni's selfless act of sacrifice guaranteed the safeguarding of the other two destroyers, allowing them to reach the African shore unscathed. The surviving Italian destroyers, Ostro and Zefiro, safely reached Benghazi on the morning of June 29th. The intense naval engagement between the 7th Cruiser Squadron and Italian forces, lasting approximately two hours and ten minutes, saw about 5,000 shells fired by the British cruisers. Although an Italian 4.7-inch shell struck HMS Liverpool, causing minimal damage, the Battle of the Aspero Convoy revealed the impracticality of daylight naval actions at long range, resulting in excessive ammunition consumption. The prisoners, taken from the Italian ship, divulged critical details, including the presence of a company of 225 men and passengers on Espero and the fate of Captain Baroni. The aftermath revealed Sydney's guns stripped of paint, testimony to the intense engagement. Tovey's command had expended nearly 5,000 six-inch rounds to sink one destroyer, leaving only 800 rounds in the entire theater. Cunningham postponed two Malta convoys slated for June 29th due to the cruiser's ammunition depletion. The attack on the Espero convoy underscored the strength of British air reconnaissance as they had discovered the convoy and directed the squadron towards them. Captain Baroni was posthumously recognized with the gold medal of military valor. As the Espero descended into the depths, it marked the ominous beginning of a harrowing toll for Italian destroyers. 58 would follow suit during the Second World War. Simultaneously, it set the tone for the fate of 174 Axis ships, both military and merchant vessels, sunk along the treacherous routes to Libya. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave a like, it really helps out the channel. If there is a topic, battle or person you would like to know more about, let me know your thoughts in a comment. I would also like to thank all my patrons and channel members for their generous support. If you enjoy House of History and you want to support my work, consider joining me on Patreon. For just $1 per month, you will already gain early access to all my videos without any in-video advertisements. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.